Yes, well, it is a big deal this time. And I'll explain why. One thing Elijah said was this, but you've walked the way of the kings of Israel and you've made Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem to go a whoring like to the whoredoms of the house of Ahab and also hast slain thy brethren of thy father's house, which were better than thyself. Behold, with a great plague will the Lord smite thy people and thy children and thy wives and thy goods, and thou shalt have great sickness and disease of thy bowels. These pages are stuck together. What the heck? <laughs> that is weird. The pages. Okay. Until thy balls, until thy bowels, fall out by reason of sickness by day by day. Moreover, the Lord stirred up against. Jehoram, the spirit of the Philistines and the Arabians that were near the Ethiopians. And the Lord did what Elijah said, smote the king. Well, as it was then, it is now. As it was then, it is now for this king. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers have not done, nor his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds even for a time. And he shall stir up the power and the courage against the king of the south with great army, and the king of the south shall be stirred up in battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand, for they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed on the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And both these kings' hearts shall be uh, able to do mischief, and they shall speak lies at one table, but it shall not prosper. For yet, for yet the end shall be at the time appointed. Then shall he return to his land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. And the time appointed, he shall return and come toward the south. And arms shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary of strength, and shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they that place the abomination that maketh desolate. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. But the people that do not know their God shall be strong. I'm sorry. The people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. And they that understand among the people shall instruct many. Yet they shall fall by the sword and by flame and by captivity and by spoil many days. Now when they shall fall, they shall be holpen with a little help. But many shall cleave to them with flatteries, and some of them understanding shall fall to try them and to purge and to make them white, even to the time of the end, because it is not yet the time appointed. And the king shall do according to his will, and he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every god, and shall speak marvelous things against the god of gods, and shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished, for that that is determined shall be done." Neither shall he regard the God of his fathers, nor the desire of women, nor regard any God, for he shall magnify himself above all. But in his estate shall he honor the God of forces, and a God, God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver and with precious stones and pleasant things. Thus he shall do in the, in the most strongholds with a strange God, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory, and he shall cause them to rule over many and shall divide the land for gain. And at the time of the end shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind, with chariots and with horsemen and with many ships, and he shall enter into the countries and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter into the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, the chief of the children of Ammon. 
He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasures of gold and of silver, and over all the precious things of Egypt, and the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the, out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy and utterly to take away many. And he shall plant the tabernacles of his palace between the seas in the glorious holy mountain. Yet he shall come to his end, and none shall help him. And now... As we... Somehow I'm fumbling around in my... It'd be better if I had these marked, huh? Okay, here we go. And then... And then... How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down from the ground which uh, did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven, and I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds, and I will be like the most high. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit, They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms, that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof, that opened not the house of the prisoners? All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory, every one of them in his own house. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch, and as the raiment of those that are slain, thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. Prepare slaughter for his children and for the iniquity of their fathers that they do not rise nor possess the land nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut them off from Babylon, the name, the remnant, and son, and nephew, saith the Lord. I will also make it a possession for the bittern, the pools of water, and I will sweep it with the the besom of destruction, saith the Lord of hosts. The Lord of hosts hath sworn, saying, Surely I have thought, so shall it come to pass, as I have purposed, so shall it stand. And I will break the Assyrian in my land, and upon my mountains tread him underfoot, then shall his yoke depart from all of them, and the burden depart from off their shoulders. This is the purpose that purposed upon the whole earth, that this is the hand that is stretched out upon the nations. For the Lord of hosts hath purposed, and who shall disannul it? And in his hand is stretched out, and who shall turn it back? So interesting, we talk about Lucifer and then chastising the king that goes forth to destroy. And that's basically, people say, well, there's nothing that's going to happen. There's nothing that's going to happen. And of course, all these prophecies, the the writers, are not intending this for... The day, it's, it's a holographic situation. As it was before, it is again. And if it's uttered again, it shall be again. If these words are uttered again, they shall be again. They apply to now as they did then. It's just that simple. In fact, the whole Bible is like that, pretty much, with some things being reserved. Even Daniel, the time of the end, in his mind, was not where we are. But it doesn't matter what his mind was, or what he was thinking. Same with John on Patmos. It doesn't matter what he was thinking. And he was envisioning, you know, the Roman Empire and the fall of that. 
it doesn't matter what he sort of envisioned because he has the context of his own time. And as I said, people do things prophetically that they may not be aware of, that they may not be aware of at the moment. And uh, <laughs> the coyotes are going, so our dogs are after them. So as I've come to understand this whole thing, what happens is people are, you know, prophecies are given but then when they're uttered again and the words of the Lord are spoken, it's in, in the context of today, then it equally applies to today because of the discernment of the reader having chosen the scriptures to read or having been led to them to read as a rebuke or as a picture of what the Lord, where the Lord is at this moment. As it was before, it will be again and it will be again and again. Thus, these scriptures of the evil king, who is then juxtaposed with Lucifer, who is then juxtaposed with this indwelling of Lucifer, that Lucifer has fallen and that, and that the, the, the Bible means and the word means that any king, any leader, who exalts himself above the Most High, and this is what this is all about here, who exalts himself above the Most High and who uh, does honor to a strange God and who goes to uh, take away the security, uh, the sustenance, the homes of people, thus utterly destroying the land, destroying the economy and things like that for his own gain and purpose. He has exalted himself above the Most High. He is Lucifer in, in, as per the word of God, as per Isaiah 14, where I was. And I'm sorry I didn't list all those scriptures. But instead of Isaiah 14, we see that Lucifer here is juxtaposed with the king that does evil and the rebuke and the, and the destruction that comes from God to put an end to it. And that's juxtaposed with the Lord saying, I'm putting an end to it. And we go into um, Ezekiel 13, beginning of verse 17, we also realize that the strongholds of witchcraft, the Lord has already, in his, he, he's allowing it for a certain time, but then he puts an end to it. He will not always allow the sewing circles to do their sewing and their blaspheming. And all these people and all these things have something in common. Not only are they arrogant, these leaders that win the kingdom by flattery, in other words, I'm now un unpacking this, the leaders who win the kingdom by flattery and then who seek to do evil in the name of themselves, exalting themselves above all because it is the will of, their, of the gods that they honor, that they be considered above all. And when we see the people bowing down to worship, and I'm going to, I'm going to unpack this even further, and I'm going to unfold this further, that as we see this happening and as we're drawing it all together from Old and New Testament alike, and as it pulls in to the word of God, to his words, and his words applying now, we see this picture emerging at the solstice, at the end of this Mayan calendar, at the beginning of this tribulation. We see this white horse being unleashed from the, the, the seal being broken and uh, the kick-starting of this situation. People had said, but what about the end of the Mayan calendar? Nothing will happen. And the, the answer is, no, nothing will happen. The Maya, I'm not saying these prophecies are above or below anything else. The Maya never said anything would happen. Time ends. And so it's a different time. That the, the, the cycles of time that we've had have ended. And that the return of the gods is what the Maya envisioned at the end of time. And the Maya would sacrifice people and children and everything else. You know how bloody that was. In order to get it to be like it was, to get the, in other words, like it was, meaning that they had a utopia when they had the gods there. And they are wanting the gods to return, some of the humans becoming gods. Apotheosis is nothing new to the Freemasons. And becoming divine. And that these kings of old the Bible calls the mighty men of renown would return to the temple, would return to the people, would return to the whole earth in a time uh, that is undocumented, 
in a time of the end, and when the time runs out, then they can return. The mechanism, then they can return. And then the book of, uh, of uh, Revelation is, this is a great tribulation, Matthew 24, this is a tri- great tribulation unlike the world has ever seen. And um, there are earthquakes and famines and hurricanes and strange storms and magic and sorcery and all kinds of uh, signs in the heavens and things that are done that, that are incredible that we've never seen before. And truly, the time that was before has ended. Now, I'm telling you what they're, they're, they're saying these things in their temples and their secret societies. So I'm telling you what they're saying. And then I'm going to tell you what God is saying. And so we're going we're gonna to line it up. What they're saying and what God is saying are kind of, in a sense, similar but from two completely different perspectives. Their perspective is that Yahweh is um, expects them to act and has blessed them to act and do as they will, and that they are fulfilling their purpose and being created by doing their purpose and fulfilling it. And as you can see, they are fulfilling it, and it is true what they say, that the Lord has given them unction to do as they see fit. And then we've just read in the word and the word has come to us to say that these people will do the following and not just the king, but all of them. They will exalt themselves among them above the most high and they will bow down to worship this new Messiah, this new king who has exalted himself above the most high, which is the abomination of desolation. Also blasphemy against the most high that this would occur Okay, and when this occurs, you know that destruction is not afar off because where it goes is they seek to conquer and destroy the whole world, to subdue the whole world under their own, under their own. Enabled by, in this case, we have the media, we have the, um, we have innumerable, innumerable powerful people bowing down now to this leader in the form of uh, our Barack Obama. And even to the to the media and to the entertainment world, uh, which is reprobate in in the sense of being um, one of Satan's stronghold. Basically, they are saying that uh, this is the one. And you know, you can mock that. And years ago, people said he's a fool, he's a con man, and all that. I have just seen. I have just seen. I saw this supernatural hurricane. I saw a supernatural voting result. I've seen one thing after another. Then I start to see them bow down, first Romney, and then, and now I see Boehner bowing down and even agreeing to be humiliated publicly for the king, all for you, Damien, because they're in the same fraternity. The Lord has revealed this to me. They're in the same fraternity that Romney and Boehner and Obama, and they're, they're in the same fraternity, and the hierarchy is coming forth. You see the structure of the hierarchy. They have to bow down. Boehner is taking punishment so that later he will be in the good graces and have a life. He is promised to have a life if he bows down and sticks it, I guess, to the taxpayers or punishes Obama's enemies or whatever it is he must do now. The same with Judge Roberts and the Obamacare. It's not that it's Obamacare. It is that it's the structure of this global governance, the structure of this king and being king over this global governance. And this, um, there's also a hypnotic effect, and I've seen people hypnotized. I've seen them um, taken over by the demonic. I've seen them speaking, you know, as I was mentioning to Trish yesterday, as I'm Walking around out there, they're not angry anymore looking to fight you or, you know, or whatever their, you know, chip on their shoulder is. They are now in a daze and hypnotized. And it's similar to those who are traumatized. They walk around now, you know, in their days and their, to their jobs in a surreal kind of hypnotic bubble, um, which they are exemplifying the symptoms of being high on drugs, let's say. And, but they're not high on drugs. They're caught up in a feeling, best way I can put it. 
and that feeling they don't want to let go of, and that feeling somehow is tied to the drug Obama, who is giving them some kind of uh, drug in the ether that is giving them this feeling. And so they're completely passive now, you know, subdued, sort of like when you shoot a, uh, an animal with a tranquilizer, but they're in a state of kind of semi-euphoria, uh, even though the reality of the situation is uh, that the destruction of nations is at hand and the destruction of themselves is completely at the door and there's no way that the, this is what we warned about for a long time. There is no way back for them because this has more to do with their where these things intersect in the secret societies, where these things intersect has to do with this structure and hierarchy. They may not even have been aware of what they're doing, but the idea is that there's this kingdom and this structure and this hierarchy, and they've been aware of that because they're, they're aware that that's how their careers came about and their, their paths in life. So they're aware of those things. And as they're aware of those things and that hierarchy, they have been taught since they were children to bow down. So they've, in this case, there is a reward. But they're all doing it, including, and people, um, there are some people out there that are commenting, they can't believe what Boehner is doing. I mean, the, the thing is, it's never been, there's never been a situation like this. Not in American politics. Again, there's never been storms. There's never been anything like any day that I've seen every day. I've never seen that day before. Truly, time has run out, whatever it was. This is not that time anymore. And probably it's all, for me, it's already run out. So it's not even really the solstice. It's just, you know how seasons change and they come in. They don't come in like on one day. It just they sort of come in. So now the, the season of mass hypnosis and mind control, and, and, and these people <clears throat> are worshiping the beast, and um, they are uh, marked for the mark. And the, the physical mark is really um, not what gets you kicked out of the Lamb's Book of Life. It's taking the mark in any way, shape, or form. In other words, if your God is Satan, then obviously um, you, know, you are past the point of no return. And so you are the second death because you are um, going unto death like that and going unto death like that with Lucifer as your God and calling him God. Of course, you've already, within you is the abomination of desolation, the mark of the beast and all the rest of it within that one person. So that person is completely done. They do, you know, after they die, they some of these wander around in an astral plane. There's levels of hell. And I suppose the the limitation of being locked into a certain plane of existence is the kind of hell that that is, is is visited upon them immediately. And there's no committing suicide or getting out of it. They're just stuck there. So a lot of these people, these entities that, that go on, these souls, they try to seek lives here to possess them, to, to live again, because they're so miserable where they are. And you know in spiritualism and seances and things, a lot of that is exactly what happens. The, the, these, these entities have knowledge of all kinds of things that have happened in people's lives and so they can emulate your mother, your father, your friend. And we've called them demons in a general category, but there's different, there's actually human entities that um, attempt to gain access. And people say, well, those are demons per, uh, pretending to be humans to get the confidence of people to let them in. And I would say, well, okay, it's a debatable issue. Um, but in my experience, that's not the case. There's all kinds of entities, some of which are, you know, they, they say are human. And there's the ghost factor as well, which is, you know, ghosts are tortured souls. That, and they say, well, that's just a recording. Well, it's not just a, a scientific recording, but I don't want to argue with you. The, the, the point that is being made here is that the, the Rima is that when you see this, exactly what was spoken to you earlier via scripture, then it is what it is. It is exactly what we say it is. It is what it is written in stone. It is what it is spoken by Elijah the prophet, spoken by Isaiah the prophet. It is what it is spoken today that this pattern and Lucifer, and the evil king, and going forth to conquer, and conquering the kingdom by flatteries, and having um, uh, dividing the land for spoil, and destroying 
the, uh, the, 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 and destroying many and, and the destroy the people of that know God will, uh, be able to do exploits in the land. And this is an exploit. For example, the exploits would be sharing the word of God, worship, all these different things. And we're going to, we're going to do more and more of this, of course, as we go forward. But that these people are conquered and then made white. In other words, it's the same as the tribulation saints. I could have simply skipped forward to Revelation, um, you know, 14, let's say, and gotten into that a little bit. But see, I don't want to confuse people with all this because what's being spoken right now into existence is this thing we're talking about, this pattern. And um, those who, who say they have nothing to do with politics or whatever would not be interested in the Bible at all because the Bible is all about politics because it does nothing but talk about kings and evil rulers and rulers the entire way through. So, of course, people that uh, Christians are mind controlled to not participate in the world or not be political, you know, or whatever it is. But that's just a um, that's just basically taking them off the table, so they have no force of power or prayer. Uh, feeling that by fo- they're following Jesus by being non participants and non observers, and so it's like, well, how can you have prophecy if you don't talk about the kings? How can you have the Bible if you don't talk about the kings? How can you talk about prophecy if you don't talk about the rulers and what they do? How can you talk about? Um, a prophecy if you don't talk about nations and God's interaction with them? How can you talk about prophecy if you don't talk about what happens to people who do certain things, who are in positions of authority and responsibility? What if we don't talk about those things like religion or politics? Then what would you get? You would get nothing. The Bible would be closed to you. Because the Bible's all about that all the way through. It's politics and religion the entire way through from the beginning to the end. So what are you going to do? That's all it's about. <laughs> no, I've, I've been friends with them. I, I don't know. I mean, my word for them is, Lord, please wake these people up. Please wake these people up who feel they're above it all and beyond it all, waiting to be raptured. The, I, clearly, the Lord has spoken. These people will be okay, and they will do exploits, and then they will be overcome. They will be overcome, uh, yet, yet they will remain uh, faithful and true because of the power and the blood of the Lamb. But at the same time, they're going to go on into many slain. Many slain in um, Isaiah, many slain in the book of Daniel. Then the same thing repeats in, in the book of Revelation. Um you know, and when we talk about it in terms of, say, communism or the, the, these kinds of terms of, of this, they like to say progressivism, but it's the same thing. It's totalitarianism, but what it really is is Luciferian hierarchy exposed in the, in the daylight, which is to, and what does Lucifer do? He destroys the nations. What's the, it doesn't matter what the form of the destruction, you can call it communism. Communism is not about order, it's about destruction. It doesn't create anything. And so you win the kingdom by smiles and flatteries and by charisma, unlike Stalin and Hitler. Same, same guy, though. And um, now, just having been named Time Man of the Year, that is perfect. Everything is perfect. And people are... I don't see Christians even understanding prophecy anymore. I see them deaf and dumb. Like they're not getting it. They're not getting it. They're saying that this is a prelude to something in the future. Well, there is no future anymore. Every day is a new creation, like a new day. And we'll come forth to... Um, how shall I put it? It's holographic. So you are and what you think and who you are and what your orientation into the world is via God and the creator uh, is going to determine your days. 
and your relationship with creator or without creator, whatever you were kind of doing every day is like a beginning, middle and end. And every day is different than the day before. And this is how we know we're in a special time. It's not like time is spanning out and we're collectively looking at it. I'm seeing the nation completely enthralled and, um, and, 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 and hypnotized to the point where Time Magazine has now put this man on the cover. I mean, this is, if this isn't, if you were going to do a movie about the Antichrist, then this would be perfect. It would be unbelievable. And I anticipate that there will be a peace treaty with Israel and the rest of it. Uh, as they try to convince us that this is the guy, when it's just really a con job. <laughs> but what would be the point of the con job? What's still the point? Thinking That kind of thinking doesn't get anyone anywhere anyway. Because what's the point? The point is to eradicate the world of God's people and to destroy the nations. So if this is true... And also the, the same thing with the, um, uh, the Vedas, how the Kalpas are divided to the fourth Kalpa is the time of, would be this time. And it also jives with the Mayan calendar in some ways. The uh, end time prophecies of the Hopis, of course, that's an oral tradition. The Egyptian uh, Book of the Dead is not really a prophetic document, but the pyramid has been um, encoded by certain people uh, to speak of this time of the return. Um, the, the whole thing about the Sumerian um, and Babylonian uh, texts and different uh, uh, cuneiform tablets and various things like that, showing that there was uh, not only a flood and all that before, but talking about the end times, about the return of this, uh, what Zachariah Sitchin called the Anunnaki, which is nothing less and nothing more than the return of the gods, the gods, these beings these superior beings who were here before, who are um, drawn up in hieroglyphics, who are, who are drawn up also in um, hieroglyphics, not hieroglyphics, but in pic pictograms, and not pictograms, but in artwork and architecture of the Maya and in China and in the Vedas and everywhere. So, you know, these people that are stupidly going around these big time Christians saying nothing's going to happen you're going to be here in the 20 second and they're trying to mind control everyone to not look at this and not look at that and not see reality and be stupid and be dumb and be asleep which is the point of modern prophets today is to make people sleep I'm not surprised that the Christian religion has turned completely backwards to, to Satan's bitch I'm not surprised that at this time today, on the solstice of the end of time, in some, in 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 one calendar, which of which the the people were so accurate that modern science today could use all of their information and go by their measurements. The fact, <laughs> it doesn't matter. No one's going to listen anyway. Christianity failed. And now I think we can say safely that the, the religion of Jesus is a complete, colossal, and total failure. It failed, as prophesied by God, to deliver the people of the earth. Instead, not only a rebellion, but the, the, the move is to eradicate these people. And, um, you know, you couldn't eradicate them unless there had been an opening, unless there had been uh, a permission, unless there had been a disobedience. In other words, you know, tribulation saints before, in persecution, waking up, strengthening, and then seeing and repenting, and then agreeing to be persecuted. That's not what Boehner was doing. Boehner was, uh, you know, you're seeing... Um, um, Basically, what you're seeing in the political world is you're seeing a temple, you're seeing priests, and you're seeing movements of the priests and the daily priestly activities of a kingdom when you see the theater going on regarding the, uh, whatever it is, the debt crisis or whatever. It doesn't matter what it is. The structure that you're seeing, you must look at the structure. You are seeing 
something that you've never seen before emerging before your eyes, it should be a confirmation of everything that you've ever known about the time you were looking forward to. It should absolutely be pleasing to you to see once in your life that the temple, the secret temple um, rituals are being done right in front of you so that you can see now how it works rather than stupidly like the Sean Hannity's of the world asking the question over and over why is he doing that why does he have grow up hair why does he stand on prince what's wrong what's going on uh, uh, and it's like no no it's got nothing to do with the debt ceiling or the the fiscal crisis or whatever they want to talk about the economy it has this has to do with with um a king a king being coronated and the power over the people and the people being handed over to him for punishment. Like as the one is being humiliated, the rest must be. And then there's a bigger picture of what is the purpose of that. And the purpose of that is what we just gave you from the word of God, which is that this is the structure of what you'll see, the destruction of nations, the dividing of the... Of, 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 of the uh, Land for gain, the uh, changing of times and laws. Everyone lining up now, and you're seeing, in, in, and they have to do this in broad daylight in order to establish. I know, I know some of you uh, people that have been on this path a long time are understanding what I'm saying. And when you see these things, friends, then you know this is the time. When you see these things, and you know, I'm I'm even to the point where I will stipulate that the end goes a long time and the days are shortened both at the same time. I will even be willing to stipulate the end goes a long time and, you know, as we had Stalin and as we had Hitler and now we have Obama in the same context. Except this is different because you're seeing religion taking place. You're seeing Luciferian religion taking place. They wouldn't bow down unless they felt that he was Lucifer. He wasn't before, but then we see he some change occurred. We see in Isaiah 14, we're talking about Lucifer having fallen down, having to exalt himself above the Most High. And in Daniel, this, this person will exalt himself above, above the Most High. And all his hierarchy will worship the beast. Who will win the kingdom with smiles, flatteries, golf, being cool. Yeah, he's the cool guy. You know, the, and, all, and all that kind of stuff. Just a charmer, huh? I've depersonalized it. I mean, I watched for a while and I got really angry when he was more in a human form. And then I realized what was going on. And then my anger completely subsided. In other words, I was angry at him as you'd be angry at a man for being a traitor for being a con artist. And I was like, couldn't they see? And then finally the answer came to me. Zeph, you're not looking at it right. And all you listeners don't see it. And all the Christian world doesn't see it. You're not looking at the prelude. You're not looking at the, you're looking at a divine coronation. You're look, the next thing is we're going to have things coming out of the sky. Once we get to this point of the solstice tonight, beginning tomorrow, and it may not be exactly tomorrow, so let's not get a timing thing going, but you're going to see these beings from the sky and this person, King Barak, the lightning that, that comes from the sky, that uh, and I saw Satan fall like lightning from the heavens above, is Barak Bama. And the O conjunction makes it Barack Obama, like Yahoshua, Yahshua, Yahoshua, Barack Obama, Barack Obama, Hoshua, Yahoshua, same, same. Isn't that a strange coincidence that when you put that in the Hebrew, it comes out to be that? Not that it's anything that you, but I mean. Where else? Um, no, I, I can't stop uh, talking about it because I'm just so amazed 
But I, I look around me and everyone's dead. It's like, don't you see? Or am I crazy? And I look at the hypnotized people because, well, Santa Fe is basically a big um, Obama stronghold. And, and I saw them in there. They're very docile now. They're, they're not harm, harmful to you at all. They're, they're, um, they're very docile now. I don't know how long that'll last, but they're, they're in a hypnotic state. I, it's just hard to explain. Nothing has a force. No word has any force. No word has any force now. No thought has any, any, any follow-through. No concept has any meaning anymore. The, the, as the, was it Yates who said the center cannot hold? The center has, has fallen away. There is no longer a center. So what does that lead to? What's that a prelude to? Destruction. War, yes? Famine. Uh, disease. Uh, a tribulation time. a prelude now to I don't know what comes after. You know, if I look at the Bible, it's like, okay, then there'll be a, a subduing of all this. But, I mean, at that point, how many people are dead? Is there really much of an army? But when we say Armageddon, the way I look at Armageddon is, because I look at the return of the Lord and all this and, and with, the, with all the army, and I look at that in the spirit as one thing, but on the ground physically, it's another thing. It has to be a culmination in a world war that will destroy with um, nukes and everything else um, most of whatever civilization was. At some point, as the seals open, and they kind of all open at once, but and then they open, you know, but then they manifest at different times. And uh, one of which, and I don't want you to forget this, one of which is the fifth seal, and that fifth seal is about the saints being overcome. You know, and then the sixth seal, they're hiding. Because they're hiding from the wrath of the Lamb. In other words, fifth, the saints get beat up, okay, and overcome. And then uh, God gets mad and opens up a big can of whoop-ass, and, and here comes the wrath of the Lamb. So what do they do? They, the wrath of the Lamb is manifesting in all kinds of earth changes and things that they can't control, so they go where? Underground, because they understand that the same supernatural events that were working in their favor are now turning against them. And then, of course, they, they oh, yes, I had to tell you this, the same rituals of the Maya, you know, you, you, you Christians, you think you're so smart, you know, you don't understand what's going on. You don't get it. This Maya thing, they're connected to, and those gods are the same as the Watchers. You, you just have it all wrong. And this, this, there are civilizations of, of other... The, these, this situation is uh, throughout the whole earth and has the similar structure of doing sac blood sacrifice to get the... Um, favor of the gods. And more and more as the civilization is failing to try to turn it around. And then, of course, the bloodlust takes over and then it just, it, it just collapses as a civilization. And the Maya just simply collapsed in one day and that was it because time had run out and they abandoned their cities and their culture. They're also the mound builders. And, um, I mean, to ignore that is, is basically you're doing yourself a great disservice, a great vast disservice in your mind control, staying, you know, um, in your, it's, you're not on a narrow path, you're on an ignorant path. Because you see very close here we have evidence of um, the interaction of these gods with man and what it looks like, how civilization was actually given to these people from their gods. It's not like they had um, Yahweh there or Jesus or any of that. They were following the, you know, the, what they knew, who was talking to them. 
And, um, you know, so they would do all kinds of rituals, which were reenactments of the time the gods were here. So they would do the rituals over again of what they would repeat the, if you will, cosmogony or creation of their world in rituals that would be designed to bring them back because this was all created and then they, then they, they left. And, um, the, but the things they were taught in their civilization, not just geometry and mathematics and, and architecture and, and things like that that they couldn't know, but this constant uh, interaction with um, these beings that also had, um, you know, were the disks and the UFOs and all of that. So all this is coming into play now. And the reason the Maya is important is because <clears throat> the identical structure in secret Freemasonry, in the very secret chambers of above 33 degrees, in those, those same secret societies the world over, these same beings and the same thing and the same hierarchy that the Maya was influenced by and, and, and led their lives by and finally abandoned. Um, because it, they, well, the important thing is that their civilization failed and their gods didn't help them. But then people say, well, the Maya went off to, to their gods. They're with their gods now. They're going to return. And I would agree with you. That's the point of the Mayan calendar. It signals the beginning of the return. The sons of God, the gods, the people who once ruled the earth, set up Egyptian civilization and gave them the pyramids and all the rest of it. The pyramid being Lucifer. These gods the Maya was talking to being Lucifer's kingdom. A very sophisticated structurally in every other way. In other words, Lucifer is a civilization that man is barred from that man wants to get into because it's a whole kingdom. And it doesn't just exist on this planet. And it exists as an entity unto itself without need of re revering God. But in the end, the big deep dark secret is, but Yahweh, creator, God is going to have the final say. So, and I know you know all that, but... Um, the parallels between the Vedic gods, the 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 the, uh, the, the, the legends of gods from the uh, from the Greek mythology, and also from uh, um, Viking mythology, and from Sumerian uh, mythology, and Egyptian religion, and African uh, oral traditions, and of course, you know, all the things in all the cultures in all the world have been affected by the same thing. And, and so, you go, you know, when you look at the Bible and Jesus and all that, th this was spread around the world, but it, it did not, it would never have the influence, let's say, uh, complete. Well, I guess it did. And Christian civilizations were built. Ale Alexander the Great, the conquistadors, the various people that spread uh, their corruption in the name of Jesus. Uh that this was a, that what I'm trying to say that is that there's nothing wrong with Mayan, the Mayan technology and mythology is something that needs to be listened to as much as Western uh, science. In the sense that um, also the wedding, there's no separation between the spiritual realm and the physical scientific realm were both as one. So it's a, it's a, it's you have this. Uh, I would, in other words, we have a picture here of the of how the gods were on Earth at one time, and we know that we know that there was, you know, that this was going on because we also know about the Nephilim. We know about the pyramids, and of course, the Maya had pyramids as well for sacrificial rituals and other thing like, uh, for example, there. Equinoxes, the procession of equinoxes and where uh, celestial bodies would be were all documented. And the people from the stars and the gods who came from the stars, they were also associated with various planets and various forces and, and various appearances. So they were connected to the planets, to the pyramid, to the structures, to the architecture, to the mathematics, to the rituals. 
They would even mutilate themselves to connect with their gods, to, to have communion with them. But the only way they could have communion with them was in the spiritual realm because they had gone away physically. And, um, you know, they do a lot of shows about all this on uh, the Discovery Channel and various those various channels. You know, but they never really put it all together as to what it means. The, the the researchers on the Maya are just really looking for clues as to what, I mean, they're all looking for the same thing as who are we and why are we here? And what is this all about? And why at, at, at 3.30 in the morning am I discussing with you this Maya as it relates to the Old Testament, the New Testament, and the and, and tribulation and, 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 and the kings of the earth because the kings of the earth um, was an obsession of the Bible. The kings of the earth was, in other words, politics. You know, politics, art, religion, you, you know, these things all go together as all part of religion, all part of the sacred. It's all part of the same thing. So you see, when you look at Washington, you can't just see secular anything. These You're seeing movements of priests, coronation of kings. You're seeing religious ritual being done publicly, and the people aren't seeing it because they think there's a separation between religion and politics. They don't understand. You're seeing the high priests of the temple doing their thing, and it's right in front of you, and they're, they're telling you, this is the king of the world, and now we're going to go into this one world governance, which is the return of the gods and their civilization. But first, there must be a purge. Nations must be subdued globally. The children must be taken over and, and trained to, to get along in this new civilization. It's not just a new paradigm. It's not a new Egypt. It's a new civilization. The gods are returning and they build giant pyramids and they build Atlantis and huge spaceships and they have all these kingdoms and f castles floating in the sky and crystal cities on the moon. They have all these things all over the place in various dimensions and it's vast. But they haven't returned just yet and they have to do all this preparation before the return. And the first thing is they have to agree who the king will be and then bow down, give absolute authority. I told you, probably the only one that's ever said this, that Morsi is lieutenant of Obama and Egypt belongs to him, Obama, and Morsi is the, what you might call the caretaker of Egypt. The people are ir irrelevant. It's already been prophesied they will be conquered, so they were. And that I could get from reading the Bible and watching the world because the Bible's talking about kings and Egypt and what the king will do. The politics, the religion, it intersects. So we the also are saying by the temple movements, I told you Washington, D.C. is laid out. It's a temple for the return of the gods and for communication with these same gods. It's the same temple as the Maya have. The same sacrifices, bloodletting goes on here as it did there. The parallels are stupendous. The gods return after... December 21st, 2012. They return. Well, that should be in a way a day of, of challenge and a day of, 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 you know, God's people will do exploits. They will do things with signs and wonders and powers of heaven that are, that are people will blow their minds. What the two witnesses are doing pretty much People of God will do the two witnesses just simply being a codex for, um, you know, uh, again, a surfacey kind of children's story. 
that will be manifest in another way. And then the whole book of Revelation is coded in that same way. People are looking around for these two witnesses. And I say, you're never going to see two witnesses. And it's not even about that. If you, you have to break that down carefully because it's still being written. I guess, you know, this is a waste of my time. People, they, they write me and they, you know, they want, they want me to talk about, um, you know, that, you know, they're, they've survived this or they've survived that. And, you know, and it's kind of like, look, buddy, seriously, you've got to do more. It's so cold here. <laughs> My dogs want to come in. It's so cold. Uh, you've done your, uh, well, I'd love to sleep. I don't know. What happened to Eli? Eli, come in here. Come in here, Eli. Come here. Come on. Come on, Eli. Get in there. Okay. If Molly's in, you're coming in. You're both coming in. Okay, now, I will keep working. Molly's out here. Eli's on his sofa. I know I got up early, right? But I had to. Because the Lord kept talking to me. And he just wouldn't let me go. He wouldn't let me rest. Because I can rest later, right? So this is just like it was a few years ago, fisherman's hours. And it's not a waste of my time. My frustration, if you know, that I have from time to time is, you know, what I'm saying today is going to make sense later. But wouldn't it be great if it made sense today? And a lot of things I've said make sense later. It's frustrating because I don't get that communication going now because it's, you know, it happens later when I'm not there. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's okay. It's okay. It's all for the Lord. It doesn't matter what I think anyway. You know, it's, it's, what it matters is that the, the, if the Lord's using me and this is an accurate use of me by the Lord, it's like, okay, then, um, then you'll be informed to see at least you'll look at the temple rituals and you'll see the same structure as the Maya and the same structure as the Egyptians in uh, Washington. And so much of, you know, how the, there's a mass shootings, okay? Mass shootings or bloodletting done in a kind of a, in front of your face as part of the, also the temple rituals that traumatizes you into accepting uh, this order of control by the government which, you know, if you look at them as priests in the temple, then it makes it starts looking a little different than, you know, people voting. Voting is, is, as I said before, it's now irrelevant everywhere in the world. It's been eradicated. So um, <laughs> they can dial in whatever they want. They don't um, go by. Uh, you saw how there are some places where the machines are. It's not even the machines. It's beyond the machines. The tallies are made elsewhere. They just put in whatever numbers they want. So there is no voting that takes place in America that's valid because even if it's a paper ballot, they'll still add it up differently where they add it up. In other words, somewhere in the chain, they change it. So there is really um, no point in that kind of participation anymore. There was maybe a sliver of hope, but you could see they chose Obama and you saw this power coming and I don't know whether that was they were doing rituals or whatever, but it's, they're not separate. The Valerie Jarrett and all that, and Obama and his crew are not separate from the others. The Supreme Court uh, conservative justices are part of Obama's court. Boehner is now a part of Obama's court. And he has to humiliate himself a little further, and then it'll be over, make Obama look good. And then it's kind of like, okay, he's earned his way into the kingdom. And he will burn in hell. If that's the case, if I'm right, which I believe I am, I have no reason to believe otherwise, he'll burn. They'll say, how could he do that? It's, it's, well, it's not human what he's doing. What he's doing is, is um, well, it's human, but I mean, it's, it's um, uh, you, obviously he's doing what, you, what it is he's doing. It's not like, let's think, what, what was his motivation? He's doing what he's doing. He's, he, it's all a, a, a coronation. 
And today is their important day because this is the beginning. And all the smart people who sold out originally so they could become politicians, you know, they're getting with the new boss that they know to bow down. And that will include the Republicans and the Democrats and, and everybody else. And then there'll be these pure heart observers that just will say, I can't believe it. Look at what's happening. It's like, no, it, what's happening is a repeat of the cosmogony. They always repeat the cosmogony. This is the coronation of the new king and the new world. So it's like, to the, that's why the media is worshipful. That because it, they're all worshipful. And why Facebook, they, they eradicate you now. Uh, if you talk about Obama, uh, crocodile tears, they got rid of a page like that. But they've, I know one person that because of his Obama comments, he was eradicated from Facebook. So they're eradicating. In other words, they're, they're doing things that we've never seen before. Uh, in other words, a political discussion. And, and all that this guy would say is, you know, he hates Obama because he's, he's this commie president. You know, it's, it's that kind of rhetoric, which is um, the other side, which has been the debate forever. As far as I can remember, Reagan was the Antichrist. You remember back and forth and back and forth. We had the same kind of thing. Well, now, no, it's actually being abridged. This speed, there is no debate allowed. And not just him, but they're getting rid of, they got rid of uh, a couple of pages on Facebook. They've eradicated everything that has to do with any anti-Obama. It all has to be one thing. This is supernatural, and it is, it is the, 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 their new Jerusalem is coming forth in, the, in this form. This is their new Atlantis. So, please. Yes, Reagan was the Antichrist, I know, and then, and then Bush is the Antichrist, and then uh, you know, Hitler was the Antichrist and then Stalin was the Antichrist and this is the same kind of guy. And, this, and I would say this, yes, they're all, they were all, including Reagan, members of the same fraternity. That's true. That's how you could, you, you know, you're not that far off when you say they are this because they are just one being. And ultimately, it's kind of like a baton. You pass the baton to the next one, but it's the team that wins. See, it does, and if they've chosen, if Lucifer has chosen to come back through Obama, fine. Then he'll get the baton to finish it out. Yeah, the, the, the evidence that I have is, you know, one piece of evidence was the graduation ceremony at Punahou School of Barack Obama. And um, I looked at the pictures, and the chancellor of the uh, of the school—it's a private school, very elite, very very expensive, and impossible to get into. Everyone wanted to go to Punahou because it's called the Surfer. You get to go surfing, right? But it's it's a it's it, in Hawaiian society. There's like this elite upper crust kind of um, uh, what could I call it? Waspy society there. This real hoity-toity kind of society. And then they're interwed, interbred with the Hawaiians. And it's just this kind of strange elite club there. It's very, very elite. Very, very private. Like, for example, the Outrigger Club on uh, Diamond Head. Very, you can't get in there. You have to be almost born into a, a, a one of the families to be able to get in there. Okay, it's that kind of thing. I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but I mean, I've been exposed to this, you know, growing up, this kind of thing. And Hawaii is very, 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 very much like that, like the old world, like it used to be, you know, when I was growing up in Los Angeles, the same thing. And, um, oh, yes, my family were members of the Outrigger Club. That's where we went when we went to Hawaii. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, Bohemian Club, Outrigger Club, you name it. <laughs> they were members of all of it. <laughs> Every, all the good clubs, not the second-rate clubs. You know, and uh, and the big the big honcho there at the Outrigger Club was obviously Duke Kanemoko, and you know he was the one that brought surfing to the mainland, and you know he was the biggest exponent of surfing, and you know he was like Hawaiian royalty, and and so you know you have this whole Hawaiian royalty thing going on, okay, and that's very much plays into this. You see, it's not hidden in secularism. Secularism is just to hide the idea that there could be this Luciferian hierarchy called royalty 
And then, okay, so then we get into um, Punahou. And Punahou, um, you know, a very expensive private prep school. And the graduates there go on to the finest universities. And uh, what else could I say about it? Um, well, to get in, there's a waiting list. <laughs> and uh, they talk about him getting in on a scholarship and on a thing. But no, uh, there was... Uh, there was definitely a path already laid out. And when he shook the, I guess it's either the chancellor or the, the head of the school uh, in the graduation ceremony, the handshake was unmistakably the Masonic handshake. And uh, so he was already in, in high society. See, this is all not about politics or New World Secular Order or George Soros or any of that. All this is about, everything that you see is about the God's return, the preparation thereof, and that this is the time they've been waiting for all their lives. Whether you think it is and whether you think tribulation begins. So basically, if tribulation begins on such an obvious thing as the Mayan calendar ending, then it would obviously all end in um, December 2019, which happens to coincide with the people that have mathematically worked out the book of Daniel and Revelation and tried to work it out in, in a timeline. So the end of this, the end of this period, I, and I, I will stipulate this, the end of this period, what begins today or tonight, and that's, I guess, why the Lord's got me up at this hour, because this is very important for you to start becoming observant. What ends, I know, I, know I, I, I can't believe how far down our people are, I, how, how far down we all are. I mean, I've had to rebuke, and I'm saying our people. I mean, you know, obviously, there are people that are prodigal sons and daughters who, are, who were, were made that way in the church system to, to sow to the world for provision and then God on the weekends. And I understand that. I understand we're still a people and, but my words the last 10, 12 years have been to bring you, to wake you up so that you, but shoot, I don't know if it's possible. Because, yeah, they'll all tell you they're saved. And I'm like, really? You don't think there's consequences for getting your provision from the devil and then, and then Jesus on the weekends, but Lucifer's really, your, you really belong to him in terms of, you know... And then it gets into, yeah, well, you're going to deny my ability to make a living. And I was like, okay, okay. So here we go. Always comes down to that. And why I'm the bad guy? Why don't you just shoot me in the head? I know you'd like to. But you're still wrong whether you kill me or not. You're still going to burn in hell whether you kill me or not. You still go to church 50,000 times a day and you, and you go to Bible study and you graduate from your ministry schools and you're an official baby. You're, you're on TV, you've got to, oh yeah, man. And you're going to burn. And so I guess that's just fine. But somebody told you, okay? Somebody on earth told you. Somebody told you. You heard it. The Lord reached out and told you somehow, even though you got really mad, you were told. Period. Let me stipulate that into the record as a witness. Your Honor, we, uh, I think the, you know, I, I, I think the, it's unbelievable when they try to fight you, Lord. But we've had so many thousands of years of this. You see this fake crap. You know, it's going on in the Old Testament. It's going on in the New Testament. Now it's the post-Testament. Now, this is the culmination, and they're going to go for their capstone. You see, they have a mystery religion. Now, let me just try to explain it another way. Their religion incorporates the Mayan religion and the Egyptian religion and the, uh, the Vedic religion and religions and, and all of it into one cohesive whole. And, and, and it's in, but the, the, the initiation rites and, and temple rituals and everything are done in front of the masses, are done in the open. But they're made to look like just regular businesses going on. 
It's not theater. It's ritual, including, and unfortunately, bloodletting, which is being done by the high priest the same as the Maya. It's identical in structure, identical. Anyway, the prophecy of the Mayan and the end of the calendar really pertained to the entire world, not to the Maya. And um, the return of the gods pertains to the whole world. And, you know, the question you should be asking then would be, well, what kept the gods away? And why did they have to go, you know, if you look at Zachariah Sitchin, 3,600 years before they could return, why can't, if they're gods, why can't they just go anywhere they want? I'm remembering now of Johnny Clack's thing where he goes, you know, he keeps quoting this scripture, you know, you, you are as gods, but you'll die like men. And who are we in this whole genetic experiment? Exactly. Exactly. And the reason Christianity fails is because people want the truth. You know, they want to understand about this, this manipulation, this fall of man. What's it mean? But the Bible is veiled to all the wise people and all the scholars and all the people that have it. You know, it's all veiled. It's all these secrets are veiled. That's, but it, it, they're done in front of your face and you don't even know what they mean. You go to the conspiracy blogs and they don't have a clue what's going on. They just take a stab at this and a stab at that. I think we established a long time ago, back in the, the 90s, I, I used to speak and communicate by doing pictures, paintings, collages, to try to get out what I mean. And I had one that I did that had light beings, like souls, floating in the ether somewhere. And they had, all, they had umbilical cords that were tied to the Great Pyramid that was floating in like fourth dimensional space. They're all floating in fourth dimensional space. And they were tethered, each one, to the pyramid. Now, what do you suppose? Then there was all kinds of hieroglyphic writing that I did by automatic writing that had things like backwards threes, upside down question marks, um, you know, weird looking sevens, you know, uh, that kind of script. And later I saw that same script written on the side of the UFO uh, kind of some of the UFO stuff they so they found the same script that I had I automatic I just knew all that script how could I know all that script and it, the same thing I saw in the writing from the say the Roswell thing whatever it was but there, remember there were some artifacts that had writing well that looked like that and they were tethered to the pyramid what do you think that means and this was at a time I'm being harassed by aliens from space so I mean that makes me sound like a nut job but they were you know, around at that time. In fact, uh, you know, I, I almost got taken out the window, uh, you know, unfortunately, and I, I fought back, but it revealed this whole thing of these watchers, these ships, these people, they were all tied in with satanic ritual abuse, satanic ritual, and they taught all the witches and all the structure and all the rituals, and they taught everybody everything about all this. And they're all intertwined with the children and the Satanic ritual abuse and the Illuminati and bloodlines, and it's all tied together. Then there's this word royalty. And then somehow Yahweh is tied in with all this, but in a, in a hierarchical way that it's hard to understand because you think he's separate and good and everything is fine. He's like floating around the New Jerusalem and everything's cool. And, um, you know, like separate from all the activities going on all, all over the world and all over the galaxy, and all over intergalactically, and everywhere. Like, Yahweh is se out there separate from that. And that's the view Christians have. I find that intolerable. We need to have people who think, and will sit down and think about it all, and let their fancy flow a little bit, you know, let let their... Let their, you know, their wonder go like children and be interested in this and interested in that and try to pull it together, what they're looking at. Rather than just, well, you see the deception's big. I'm on the narrow path. I know, see no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil. You're fine. You're going right to heaven and it's all fine. You just become a deaf mute and that's great. All these activities and all these gods, the prophets of old were intersecting with them all. 
you know, rebuking on the one hand, interacting uh, that, that, that none of this was separate from anybody. There are great angels and beings and ships and everything Ezekiel saw and clouds of glory and, you know, and all kinds of uh, events. It was all tied together, you know, and um, the throne of God was there in the midst of these ships. So the idea of ships, UFOs, lights in the sky, and all this uh, stuff, the idea of uh, humanity in peril. Why do they need to subjugate us to get power? Why do they need us? Because they have their power. They have to use us and expend us like batteries to get their power. Why? How? And if we're in that form of slavery, how can we be rescued? We need to be rescued from this. Somehow we must be rescued from this. Because right now we are like the lowest form of crap that ever lived. Being sub subjugated by the likes of these people like Obama. You know, overlords, slavery, limitation, death, suffering, poverty, lack, you know, or whatever. Sickness, old age, death. And I, you can be rich as could be. You can be a billionaire, but you're still going to have sickness and death. I mean, this, this thing, they don't have that, these gods. They don't have that issue. So for them, each generation is just like, basically, they're just gardeners doing harvesting. Oh, yeah, they're very much involved in all that. So what are we going to do? We can't see the picture. Even here today, I, I failed to put together the whole picture. I know this, though, that what they do in secret, they do out in the open. And that they're, all these secret societies are really, they're not so secret all their secrets are being revealed, which is that all of this stuff throughout the, the, the world that you see, these that you see exteriorly, and there's internal working and reason and mathematics and all kinds of things that go on involved in high technology and intergalactic travel and time travel and all these other things are going on that you don't know about, that we can't see the whole intergalactic picture. All we can see is this stupid little prison cell. If we just hold fast to the simple truth of Jesus, then we're going to get out of here one day. Out of where? Most people don't even know what that means. Stick to Jesus and get out of here. If you stick to Jesus, you're going to, this whole thing will be revealed to you at some point. Because Jesus, another word for him is truth. Someone very hostilely told me, yeah, well, you know, Lao Tzu said that 500 years before Jesus. And then the answer is, yes, but Jesus created Lao Tzu. So what are you going to do? That answer they would have hated. But, you know, that, that kind of ended the, um, the he, this guy was a doctor, an alternative medicine guy. That ended the, the uh, I never went back there. Because he was so hostile when he said it. It was so angry. It was... He was so angry that I existed that, I mean, I just couldn't be under the care because I, and then I got sick and I thought he was trying to kill me. And it's, it's just, maybe he, if he was, he was, he's possessed, obviously, completely possessed. And he had been, you know, raised a Catholic and, you know, rebelled against that and, you know, went to the East and now does you know, medicine. But I mean, the guy totally manifested on me. And um, like I say, I got really sick. So I realized that the cool Asian way of doing things, <laughs> we're running off to the East where we can live to be 300 years old. Um, no, sorry, there's no secrets of the East that are going to save you. <laughs> oh, this guy was a Taoist. Yeah, a Taoist. So he was like a high priest of Taoism. And um, 
man, the pride and arrogance there was just insane. Yes, Lao Tzu said some great things, you know. Uh, you know, God has given wisdom to many people. I, I didn't, I, I never went in there with a contest versus Lao Tzu. I don't, you know, that's ridiculous. Or Confucius or any of the rest of that. I, I, <laughs> but, you know, he really wanted me to know that uh, I was really, really off base. Went out of his way to tell me. Which kind of has, you kind of wonder if it's the same thing when people are abducted with UFOs. They say, you know, by the way, Jesus is not really true. It's always about Jesus. On the UFO, in the Eastern Medicine Place, uh, everywhere you go, it's going to be about Jesus in the end. Yeshua, Abashiach, the mystery. They don't even know Jesus. They just know that he's the lamb and there's wrath and there's somehow he's God and that, you know, it's kind of hidden now in a mystery. Christianity is now a mystery religion. Christianity is veiled and hidden from the people. Christians aren't the Christians. They're the outer layer of deception, of, of hiding the truth within. As they do their rituals without, the truth of Christianity, they, you see them do their rituals, but that's not the ritual. That's not the order of things. The order of things is hidden from the churches. Whereas the order of things in their temple is out is on display through their politics and through their sciences and things, but you see it more in politics. See, the inner is the outer. Without the outer, the the inner is the outer, and the outer is the inner. Right. The outer of Christianity is 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 um, the uh, deception. The inner is the truth. The outer of what they do is the, and there's a reason because the inner and outer worlds are. Um, the inner world is the freedom and, and the various dimensions. It's a gateway. The outer world is, is deception, false, and illusion. And we got turned backwards somehow to think that the outer world is the inner world and, and whatnot. And the outer world will reveal secrets that only the inner world can reveal. So they live their inner world outside in plain view. And there's a reason for that. And the, the reason is, is because of the inverse of the outer and the inner as a part of the slavery. And once we get to that point, friends, now we begin to see the whole thing comes forth. It's like, ah, so they escaped into the inner and made it the outer and then called it everyday secular society, though it was always something they could read symbolically by the movements that they saw. That right, is correct. It's beginning with a handshake at Punahou. Right, already already having a path to the White House. But not the White House. It was the White House is, is a temple. The inner of the White House doesn't mean freedom and doesn't mean the Constitution or the Declaration of Independence. Those are outer vehicles that have nothing to do with what's going on. It's a temple to the gods, to the god Lucifer. And the things they do are rituals. Boehner must bow down or his life would be ruined. And so he's showing respect by humiliating himself in front of the whole public so that he would then have a place. Well, I have news for you, Mr. Boehner. You will be um, kicked out anyway after they get a good rubbing your nose in it and then putting your face in feces, in their feces. You know, after they, they have, they're done laughing at you and they are laughing their asses off right now at you. And then they're going to kick you out anyway. Oh, you'll have a place. I mean, what I mean by out is, you know, you you'll you have you have no idea the inner workings of royalty. You're always going to be the son of a bar hop or whatever, a barmaid, a, a bar owner, or whatever it is. You know, um, yeah, there is an elitist thing between blue collar and and white collar. Obama is, for example, not blue collar. You know, they have a thing, but you know what I'm saying is. You're an everyday person. 
You're not bloodline elite. You're not, you know, the most you could be is their slave. You're a prodigal. In Christ, you would be um, something else. But see, what you're doing publicly shows me. See, I'm not, yeah, I'm seeing something here. You're showing me who you are. You're showing the whole world who you are. At this point, I, I, I could see you taking the, the chip, right, in public to, to, as an example to all the kids. You know, we can't let you get away with this. I'm assuming that, you know, somewhere along the line you went to church or whatever, but what you're doing shows that you're... But if Lucifer was in your presence, wouldn't you bow down? It's about the temple and the gods that dwell therein and the return of these gods and the preparation of the way to make the way straight for the return of the gods. For the new Atlantis, for the eternal life, they're all giddy with excitement. They're hypnotically charged. They're, you know, Obama can do, there's anything, he can do anything. Any evil thing, any war, uh, he would never be a warmonger like anyone else. He, anything he wants to do, no matter how much carnage there is, he's loved and appreciated and lauded and worshipped. His image is worshipped. His voice that has hypnotic powers is worshipped. So why he is that, has that identity, I don't know. Royalty? The new pharaoh of the world? Uh... It's absolutely um, something I accept as a reality. I am not speculating today about this. Where there is speculation is, does this mean this is the end of this and the end of that? And it's just, it's like, no, nothing today that could happen would be what the book of Daniel was really about. Anyway, it, it's basically a doppelganger. It, it, it's talking about something else Daniel was envisioning that's applying to today. They're applying it torturously to the Middle East and to the movements and this and that, seeing that it will be accurate. In other words, they want to prove that the Bible is not is mathematically accurate to the point. And I'm saying, well, in the end it will be, but it will look different because it's a hologram. It will look different as you get down the road further than you'll go back to those same scriptures and they'll change on you. And it's the weirdest thing in the world. <laughs> but, you know, I've noticed it that, no, it's not me changing, it changes. Yes, the actual scriptures change. But in my mind, they're the same as they were. It's just that I'm different encountering them indifferently. R wrong, they change. The scriptures actually change. How? I don't know. It's beyond my ability to comprehend right now. Not beyond my ability to comprehend, but just right now. Yes, that's one of the weird secrets about it. The scriptures change. I don't know if anything else changes, but I know they do. Today they changed. It's amazing what they said. I just read that same scripture last week. They changed. They changed again and again and again. And um, so I've just come to accept it. Well, of course I can't prove it. And of course, all the scholars and experts who believe in the outside world as reality, they're going to say, oh, um, that doesn't make sense logically. The Lord is not the author of confusion. Bum, bum, bum. Okay, so never, never look at the inner and the outer. Never look at, never look at anything. Just don't look at any, don't, you know, just gag yourself, put a blindfold on and cover your ears and stick uh, plugs in your ears and then you'll be fine. Me, I'm cracking this thing. I've just cracked it wide open with the inner and the outer theory. That is absolutely the truth. So the term secret society means symbolic in your face. It's not like the secret sequestered place over here. It's everyday life they exist in and the rituals go on and the structures of them so when you learn to catch that you see what the ritual is never seen anything like i've seen now the coronation of barack obama as the pharaoh of the world okay 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 no oh, it doesn't have to be the end of all time you know i'm not going to argue with the with the with the bible prophecy experts i'm just saying 
if that's the case, then the inner secret is the outer thing, and then the inner secret of the mystery of Christ is not revealed by the rituals of the church. Because in Christianity, like the world, the outer, there's an inversion of the outer and the inner worlds because the inner world would be the one that is the real world, the outer world would be. So they're reversed. But in secret society, they're reversed back to where the inner is the outer so that all of these jobs and things they do in front of you and work and whatnot isn't really what's going on. Along the way, you see uh, there are actually rituals that are happening and forms and structures, but the nation, the city... The cities are aligned the way they're aligned to reflect this truth that I'm saying right now. And I know it's truth. It's just, you know, when you know, when you know, when you know. So that's why there's obelisks and things and outer forms to show that this is, you know, the inner landscape outside, in your face. They do those things. The mass shootings were a form of, of sacrificial ritual. They were all magically induced and all part of the same scheme and all part of this pattern, uh, all leading to this one conclusion from numerous, numerous, numerous events, all supernatural, all magical, all, all sorcery, all witchcraft events happening, boom, 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 leading quickly to the coronation and to the world situation. And then you heard what was said by the Lord, which is, that he exalts himself and he destroys all these nations. So there you go. And with that, I bid you shalom, shalom. I'm going to try to head back and get a little bit of sleep. You'll be getting two podcasts. So there's one that's a prelude to this. This is the end of the Mayan calendar that ends today. This is the beginning of, in the Maya's mind, of, in, the Maya, the, in the Maya's prophecy The only prophecy they have is that the return of the God, the God will return to his temple. Whether that's Ketakwatl or whatever God they want to call it. The serpent God, yes, that would be uh, Lucifer. (laughs) He'll return to his temple upon the earth. Yes, he was held out of it and, and couldn't do it because God's hand held him back. There was a reason that he hadn't been able to be here and now he's... When they 